Hey, Fidelity Fortune Hunters, it's Tom Wilmot. We're going to take another look at our Active Trader Pro platform. And in this video, we're going to spend time on three important areas. First of all, we're going to review a number of the ways you can manipulate the platform and change various features uh, in the visibility of each chart. Second of all, I want to show you really important issues related to the head and shoulders pattern that's emerged as a very important way to keep track of the progress of various equities uh, during this time of uh, volatility in the uh, coronavirus pandemic. And finally, I'd like to review quickly that Fibonacci tool that we introduced during our last video and show you how you might be able to use it to uh, uh, pick out a target profit area. So, hold on to your hat. We'll get started right after this. Okay, you fortune hunters, let's get to work. Uh, as many of you have watched previous videos know, these are my multiple moving averages here. These are the 12... Uh, 16, 20, and 24 EMA. And for those of you who watch our uh, Forex videos uh, on fxfortunehunter.com, I wanted to share with you uh, as we move toward the Fidelity platform that the, uh, the types of uh, trades and the changeover and trend are exactly the same from instrument to instrument, from investment vehicle to uh, investment vehicle. So whether you're trading currency pairs or equities or options or anything else, it's all the same kind of strategic idea. And so what we've done here is to mimic the uh, 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 Forex.com MetaTrader type of indicators that we use uh, for our currency trading, and they work very, very well. So the idea here is uh, let's quickly uh, do a few edits on this platform just to review some of the things we've covered before. For sure, you remember, I hope, that you can come over and grab this line if you want to bring your margin in a little bit. There's a top line up here as well. When you see the arrow change to a double arrow, grab it and drag it down. Uh, and uh, you can see here we have our RSI down on the bottom with a 45.55 band in the middle. And it's here in this area when this holds that uh, represents a pretty nice entry opportunity for you. And the reason it's nice is because it minimizes your risk. You know, if you continue to fall, you want to have a stop loss and you're uh, very close to that stop loss, as opposed to being up here where your risk is uh, very, very high and your reward to the upside is much less certain. Okay, so now what we'd like to do also is to go up here to our settings <clears throat> because I want to show you how you get rid of uh, the crosshatch grid on this particular thing. Grid opacity is right here, and you can see it's quite uh, visible now. We want to get rid of that because I don't like the dark lines as so much as just a little shadow of something. <clears throat> the same thing would be true for your symbol right here, watermark opacity, the symbol in the middle, which is helpful, but you may want to scale it back or whatever. Uh, once again, in this area, uh, you apply and now you're back to it and you can see we see Microsoft is here but the grid has disappeared so that's helpful to us. <clears throat> now when you want to save this new version what you do is come here to the diskette uh, icon at the top. I have Tom's basic uh, multiple moving averages here that's the one that I just made the edit on. I can save that chart and then the next time the uh, grids won't be there until I change them back should I wish to do that. I have also done a couple of the other uh, template uh, templates from Forex.com and MetaTrader here and uh, so we're going to save that chart. First of all the view exists but we do want to change it. Yes. So now we come back here <clears throat> And I have this one called Fast Running, and I'll show you that one as well. We're going to pull that up. And there it is. Now, this was the uh, particular indicator, 
as you recall, that had the longer term moving averages in this area to, uh, from, say, a 30 to a 50 EMA, and then a shorter term set of moving averages up here, representing like the scalpers and the day traders and so forth. And you can see this is a period of accumulation of the shares in Microsoft that went back uh, through and into the middle of February before uh, all the stuff started to hit the fan. And then we had this downtrend, which took place during the uh, March time frame. And then we've had a reversal. Uh, now, you have the ability to put in a stochastic, should you wish to do so down here. Uh, let's get rid of that for now just to make the chart a little clearer. I'm going to delete it. Uh, in order to get that, you would simply go to indicators here, and your stochastic would be over in this area and so forth. Okay, so there's your stochastic slow, which is the one I was using. Okay, but for the time being, we'll just exit that. We'll bring this back. Now, in order to make the chart even bigger for yourself, you can grab this line in the middle, and that takes our RSI down and makes it a little more modest down below. <clears throat> the uh, final thing I wanted to share with you, <clears throat> excuse me, about this a chart and how to modify it is this up arrow right here rather than dealing with these uh, periods of time here uh, 10 days one month year to date and so on and so forth and the frequency you can put your frequency here and then by clicking on this you can adjust with this band right here to say whether you're going to have wider or narrower candles or price bars and you can see you can make it bigger so you can see it or you can zoom out and uh, that's very helpful uh, in terms of modifying and customizing the chart to make it look exactly like you'd see it. Okay, that's the first area, which was how to uh, make modifications to your chart here. Now we're going to take a look at the second area, which is that uh, head and shoulders, or sometimes called king's crown, type of uh, uh, setup that you can see right here in this particular area we see uh, the right side up version of it there's the head here was a shoulder over in this area perhaps you'd look here also at a shoulder configuration and you can see as you draw the trend line up in this area that when you break down through it clearly the uh, trend to the top of the head is over usually what has to happen is you have a downtrend like this and it usually has to take out one of these significant lows here to be legit. Then you pull back and you can see that right here, if we were to draw our line in place, the horizontal line, you can see that right here was the area, you know, from here up into this area where we had that other shoulder and the right uh, left tip of uh, the the tip of the left shoulder and the tip of the right shoulder that shows that this is the situation we come up to this area now if this is going to continue into an uptrend despite this reversal a reversion to the mean this would have to take out that other shoulder the left shoulder and keep moving higher but in fact what happened is we moved in this direction now notice here we have the upside down head and shoulders here we are right here and if we move our line down here you'll notice that once we came up and took out this area we had a nice take out of this line these uh, significant uh, uh, lower lows over here then we came down here and we held at the tip of the right shoulder matching the tip of the left shoulder so that's an area now if it continues lower you know you've got some trouble maybe the reversal isn't going to happen but notice the rebound here and off we went to the races and now you know the trend is moving in a different direction and you can begin to pick off entries such as this one and the reason we have this gap planned in this area is because that can be a very nice entry for you okay uh, with your stop loss set right below this lowest level of the uh, of the uh, longer term uh, cumulative uh, moving averages. Now what I'd like to do uh, is to illustrate how this works. And oh, by the way, over in Forex.com and the currency pair area, the same kinds of configurations will appear time and time again. This head and shoulders has really been significant during this downtrend and uh, has occurred on multiple time frames. 
Uh, and so you'll see in this particular area here, if we were to go down to a lower time frame, here's another one. High was made. Uh, we pulled back down here. This could either be the head and shoulders of the smaller configuration here, pull back and then the tip of the right shoulder, and then a continuation to the north. And you knew that uh, if you uh, couldn't go down from here, that you were in trouble. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of others. So you know the uh, airlines have been in terrible, terrible shape. How about United? Let's take a look at how badly, in fact, they did uh, with this one. Now notice I still have my 195 minute chart on, and by simply clicking here and changing symbols, this is the pathetic configuration for the airlines. We did have the, uh, the, the low here. Here was our left shoulder potentially. Here was this one. And notice how it just dropped away and simply has never been able to get through the, uh, the accumulation bands or uh, distribution bands, I can call them, versus the trader bands, as it were. Okay, we did have this a reversal here, but then we couldn't penetrate, and we had the downturn over a period of days. Now, this is a 195-minute chart. As I mentioned, that's two uh, sections per trading day. 78 is a lower level one you can also use, and that's four per trading day uh, from 9.30 to 4 o'clock. Okay, notice that was United Airlines. Let's take it a couple other examples and see how you can tell the difference between them. How about FedEx? Here we go with this one. Uh, notice here we have this. Now what we could do here is to change this to a 78 minute version right here. We'll do this in this area here. <clears throat> and we may have to make some adjustments here. We could uh, widen this out a little bit here. Okay. So we've got a little bigger bandwidth. You can tell how we're just manipulating this. So I hope that's helpful to you too. Now FedEx had a slightly different thing. Here was the drop off the cliff uh, between the 12th and the 23rd of uh, March. We did come back up, but notice it took some time to get above these previous highs. We did have a pull into this area, and then we came down here, and here's your shoulder uh, typically right here. Let's pull this in. And those of you who've listened before know that I have real problems with the fact that I have to keep changing this to a default yellow so you can see it more clearly. I wish they'd give us an opportunity to do that. Uh, here we go. Let's make it yellow. <clears throat> okay, here we are. Notice here was your shoulder on the left-hand side. And you can tell because it never came back to challenge this one. In a downtrend, in a continuation of the downtrend, you would have had a pullback lower than this. This held again. So you've had some decent trades, but really we've never even approached anything uh, uh, towards the high that occurred back in February. And that was $165 a share. And uh, FedEx was well over 200 for uh, most of 2019. So this has been a devastating blow. Okay, let's take another, another look here <clears throat> and notice, uh, as a matter of fact, before we do that, I'm going to come here to the drawing tools and show you the Fibonacci. If you come across to this area, this is the time one. That's not the one we want. We want the Fibonacci retracements. And so you can see if we were to come from this area here, and took come down to this area, which was the low. And then we're going to change our color so you can see it. Sorry for that. Let's see. I hope I can. Let's see where we are here with the, with the uh, Fibonacci tool. It's hard to grab. We're going to try to get it. Uh, come on, guys. There we go. Now we come up to this area, and we have our yellow. And we're going to remove the 23, because that's not worth much. And then what I'd like to do is to uh, have a reversal uh, back to the uh, uh, 127 uh, would be a move back up into this area here. But let's just see where we ended up on the Fibonacci retracements. Hang on one sec. We're going to apply this. Notice that we came down. I like to have my middle band 68 I'm sorry, 61.8, 50%, 38% retracements. Uh, and obviously now you can see that we just have been playing in the middle of these bands. 
We managed to get to a 61.8 here, but no more. So you'd have to be very cautious in terms of your uh, uh, swing trades in this area, figuring that you were going to have a continuation past the 618 uh, extension there and retracement level. Okay, that's great. Now what we want to do is to uh, just delete this one. If you don't mind, we're going to remove it and get rid of that. Now what I'd like to do is show you the real winner in all of this so far. And that was, of course, our Netflix. And it'll give you a good idea of the difference between these two charts. This is our 78-minute chart. And look at this. Here we were once again the last week in February. We come down into the March time frame uh, into the 16th all the way through the 20th in that terrible period when Netflix suffered like everybody else, when nobody was sure what was going to happen. And then they said, holy cow, stay at home. I guess I'll be watching uh, uh, streaming videos all day. And so off we went to the races. Notice what happened here. Here's the left shoulder. Here's the right shoulder. Here's a continuation higher, continuation higher, and then taking off, actually. Now, the interesting part about this, if you take a look at the Fibonacci, is the difference, and you can tell them for yourself. If we come from here down to here, and I'll try to keep it a little higher so that I can grab it more easily, we're going to do the same thing again. See how nice it would be if we had default values? We wouldn't have to fuss with this every time. Now what I'd like to do is to show you uh, if we had the 1618 uh, as an added value up here. Uh, actually, I better do a a decimal point. I'm going to try that. We'll see what happens. And we may have to use 162, but let's just see what happens here. And notice on this, and there we'll go about back up here and we'll get our um, line down a little bit. Notice what happened here when we had a real winner, Netflix. We were able to penetrate this middle area, continue higher, continue higher, and then with that big burst, all the way to the 1618 uh, extension to the upside. Now, I've mentioned to you before, if you're over in MetaTrader, uh, you have other choices with Fibonacci. You could come up here, up to the 50, and then you could also track progress to the downside in the Fibonacci ex extension. This is kind of a reverse extension that, uh, that uh, and Advanced uh, Trader Pro or Active Trader Pro is programmed into the chart patterns. Why they won't go two directions, I have no idea. But uh, it is at least useful for you to see that Netflix had this reversal and, and went to the 1618. This is your target. This does not mean you sell necessarily. It does mean you could be running out of steam. And in fact, what happens typically is you have a pullback, a retest to the 1618, and then maybe all the way back down here, you see to the original point that we started. Could Netflix continue back and continue on to the uh, double, the 200 level? Absolutely could. But as we pointed out in a previous video, this was at least a target area where it paid to be more cautious with your long trade. Okay, I hope those uh, videos help, uh, those uh, situational analyses help uh, with your trading. I hope you can uh, plug these issues into your uh, uh, Active Trader Pro platform and uh, benefit from them as you're swing trading your way to profits with your self-managed account. Thanks for watching. Be sure to get over to fxfortunehunter.com. Many of the templates that we've put over there are uh, something that you can copy for practice into Advanced Trader Pro. Don't forget, you could try a currency account as well. Join us uh, for lots of good information in these videos. Give us a like if the information is uh, helpful to you. Please subscribe to our channel so you can get updates as they become available. And don't forget to check out our book, Forex, A Profit Power Surge, over on Amazon.com. There's lots of information about all of those things in the description below this video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.